Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being served, sir? I'm Humphreys, and I'm free. Are you being served, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beachwear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. Whoops! Are you being so sad? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so sad? What would you like to see? Good morning, Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> Eight. 48. As the head of the ladies' ready-maids, Captain Wagstaff, I would have hardly thought it necessary for me to clock in like a char. Well, I'm not asking you to do anything I wouldn't do myself, Mrs. Crawford. Look, Captain Wagstaff, 8.31. Listen, <laughs> what's happened to Miss Nichols? She isn't late. She's powdering her nose. Oh, oh, well, she should have signed in first. It was very urgent that she powder her nose when she did, and so I gave her permission to do so. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Wagstaff. Sorry we're late. Mr. Randall caught his handbag in the door. <laughs> handbag? Ah, uh, it's Miss Nichols. She dropped it on the stairs. She seemed to be in a bit of a hurry. Of course, it's not his. He wouldn't be seen dead with an imitation crocodile handbag. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Mangasby. Good morning, Mr. Humphreys. What lovely rosy cheeks we have this morning. Well, I, I came through the park to give my toast crust to the ducks. <laughs> My wife doesn't like me to leave them, you know, and these new teeth aren't quite up to them. They're so hard, you know. Even the ducks have to wait until they go soggy. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be all right after you've run them in for a few days. So, yes, when you've quite finished, the handbag explains Mr Randall's late arrival, but what of yours? Do you realise it is one minute past nine? Oh, dear. Have all the customers gone? Yeah. <laughs> that is not the point, Mr Humphreys. You are supposed to be here at nine o'clock, not one minute after. Oh, well, I can explain all that. You see, I got outside the store about five to nine and there was a commotion. Someone had got knocked down. A tall, military-looking gentleman. It's Captain Wagstaff, I thought. He's early, like me, and he's got knocked down. <gasps> <laughs> my heart was in my mouth. Captain Wagstaff <coughs> cut off at the height of his career. <laughs> Stand back, I said. I'll give blood for Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> so by the time I'd forced my way through the crowd, realised it wasn't you, got up here, it was one minute past. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but a creature has crawled out of your carnation and crouched on your collar. <laughs> Deal with it, Humphreys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will there be anything else, sir? Yes. Get me a fifteen and a half collar from stock. Sorry I'm late, Captain Wagstaff. Oh, that's quite all right, Miss Nichols. No, it's all right for her, isn't it? She's been powdering her nose, Mr Humphreys. Then why is it so shiny? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough, Mr. Reddle. Yes, Captain Wagstaff. I'm having terrible trouble with your drawers. I was struggling with them for ten minutes yesterday, right in front of a customer. Oh, mine are just as bad. It's always the same in the damp weather. <laughs> I suppose I'd better give it a bit of encouragement. <laughs> Is Captain Wagstaff here? He's just arrived, sir. He's putting his collar on. <laughs> we expect you to get dressed before you arrive at Bone Brothers, Captain Wagstaff. I do not expect to find you unattired at five past nine. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> I can explain, sir. I don't want to hear any excuses. <laughs> I want a word with the members of your department. Of course, sir. Uh, Mr. Magovich, would you step this way if you're free? I'm free, Captain Wagstaff. Uh, Mr. Randall, Mr. Humphrey. Free, sir. Ever so free, sir. Uh, would you step this way, please, Mrs. Crawford? <laughs> Miss Nichols, one moment, please. Before we 
I go any further, Mr. Fenwick, Miss Nichols and I would like to point out that our drawers are a positive disgrace. <laughs> oh, what, Mrs. Crawford? Our drawers, they're sticking. <laughs> it's always the same when they're damp. <laughs> really? Uh, Miss Nichols could hardly shift hers at all just now. No wonder she was late. <laughs> they sent someone up who put beeswax all over them, but it only made them worse. <laughs> I'm not surprised. If you ask me, they want sandpapering. <laughs> Would that be any good, Captain Wagstaff? <laughs> I puff French chalk on mine, and do you know they're as smooth as silk? Well, perhaps you can puff French chalk on Mrs. Crawford. <laughs> all right, I think we will consider the matter closed at the moment. Now... I have been particularly distressed to learn of the slump in our sales in the past four weeks, which I'm sure we've all observed. Uh, yes, I have observed it, haven't you, Mr. Magovitz? Oh, I would say a definite slump. Had you observed it, Mr. Humphreys? I had observed it, Mr. Magovitz. I think Mr. Randall had observed it too, haven't you, Mr. Randall? Yes, I had, Mr. Humphreys. Mm. Actually, I remarked to you about it, Mr. Magovitz. And I mentioned it to you, <laughs> Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> that's right. That's what caused me to discuss it with you, sir. Uh, yes, that's probably what first alerted me to the crisis. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, and I don't want to put too fine a point on it... Uh, why? <laughs> Have you any suggestions, Mr. Magovitz? After all, you've been with us longer than most. Well, my personal feeling from long experience in the trade is that these things come and they go. Oh. <laughs> That's very true, of course. It's very profound. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys? As departmental head of the ladies' section, I feel I should have been asked next. Well, of course, I'm sorry, Mrs. Crawford. Have you got any suggestions? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like to be asked. Well, I think it's the weather, don't you, Mr. Randall? Ah, oh, definitely the weather, Mr. Humphreys. That, coupled with the fact that there's no customer. <laughs> yes, well, the points you've made are all very valid, but the time has come for action. Here, So, I've decided it's time we examine our whole sales technique, to which end I'm holding a class in salesmanship tonight when the store closes. What, in our own spare time? Oh, it's very short notice. There's my pussy to consider. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's going to let it out? <laughs> if it is not convenient, I shall quite understand. At the same time, I would remind you that unless sales improve, we shall have to cut down on staff. Oh, I expect it will be all right. <laughs> Tiddles will have to cross his legs. <laughs> well, I presume you'll not be needing me. I do have two tickets for the military tattoo. Your attendance would be valuable, Captain Wagstaff. Ta-ta to the tattoo. <laughs> right, that's all. Uh, Mr. Randall and uh, Mr. Humphreys, perhaps you would come to my office now. I want to go through your personal sales record for the past month. Oh, and uh, bring your books with you. I don't know what you want your book for. I would have thought you could have remembered your sales. <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Why is it taking so long, Cocker? If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, sir. That's my motto. Very commendable, I'm sure. But I don't know why you're doing the job in the first place. All I wanted was for the door to open the opposite way. That's clearly a job for the carpenters. Oh, yes, granted, sir. But you see, you caught them in the middle of a meeting. Oh, not again. What's it about this time? Well, in order to decide what action to take over their pay dispute, they was holding a stop work meeting. And what will the outcome be? I should think they'll stop work. <laughs> oh, I don't know what the workers of this country are coming to. You know, I was reading in the paper only this morning that in Russia, workers work a 12-hour day with only 30 minutes for lunch. Yes, well, you wouldn't get our blokes to go along with that. Why not? They're all communists. <laughs> right, there we are, sir. That handle is as good as new. Come in. <laughs> and after lunch, I'll have a go at the engine. I, I believe you 
invited us to come and have a little chat with you, sir. Yes, that's right. Shut the door. Now, Mr. Humphreys, I have here the menswear sales graph. Are you sure you've got it up the right way, sir? <laughs> I'm afraid so. I presume you know what this means. Well, if I was a doctor, the patient would be dead. <laughs> there is no cause for levity. A nerve, sir. Understandable. Nevertheless, this is a very poor performance. Now, I always think there's a reason for a poor performance. A happy salesman is a good salesman. But I must say that neither of you look happy. I think it would help if you could smile more. I'm sorry, I haven't been smiling enough, Mr. Fennett. <laughs> yes, well, there, there must be a reason for it. Uh, are you, uh, and I don't wish to pry, are you unhappy at home? Well, that could be it. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Uh, sit down and tell me. Well, it's my environment, you see, sir. I've got this one shabby room. <laughs> oh, please, thank you. In... <laughs> In Turak, isn't it? Yes, the very poor part. The... <laughs> Since we've had to take in this Asian to make both ends meet, well, it's upset my poor crippled mother so much that she's had to give up her job at the skating rink. I had no idea. Oh, yes. And what with the cat having asthma and coughing all night? <laughs> Me having to cook on a broken gas ring? Well, the magic seems to have gone out of my life. <laughs> But I will take your advice, Mr. Fenwick. I will try and smile a bit more. This is really a most terrible story. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I think it should be placed on your record. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, um, uh, you live in uh, Turak. Yes. Good. And um, your mother is an Asian. No, 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 no. <laughs> we had to take in an Asian. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, your mother has a cough. Uh, it's the cat that has the cough, sir. And uh, you're supporting this Asian on a broken gas ring. <laughs> Shall I write it down for you, sir? Now, Mrs. Crawford, I do hope your cat won't suffer unduly from its enforced confinement. It isn't confined, it's shut up. <laughs> well, let's hope you won't be too late. Oh, what a pity about your tattoo, Captain oh. Wagstaff. I always thought tattoos were something men did on their chests. <laughs> with needles and blue ink. No, not only on men's chests, Miss Nichols. Oh, Captain Wagstaff, what will you say next? As a matter of fact, uh, it reminds me of a bit of doggerel I picked up in the mess. Oh, yes. <laughs> on the chest of a barmaid from sale was tattooed all the prices of ale, whilst upon her behind, for the sake of the blind, was precisely the same, but in braille. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry you've been so quick. I was just going to start a collection for your farewell presents. <laughs> I've talked my way out of it. We're staying. Uh, did you tell him about your grandfather in the iron lung and how you can't afford to pay the electricity bill? <laughs> oh, no. He gave him the crippled mother, the Asian and the asthmatic cat. <laughs> you used up a lot of material there. <laughs> what did he say? He wants us to smile more. Retail salesmanship is a very serious business, Mr. Humphreys. And if you think I'm going to stand for you two grinning like Cheshire cats, you're very much mistaken. He said it would improve sales, and that means more commission. <laughs> he could be right. <laughs> Rubbish, this is. Were you uh, going anywhere then? No. What about going to the pictures? What's on? Well, there's Bambi at Studio One and the unsatisfied virgin around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Bambi. Oh, forget it. A time 
Titanic finishes, the virgins will be satisfied. <laughs> Is everybody here? Oh, I'm ready, Mr. Fennick. I've just been putting my evening face on. Looks even worse than the morning one, Mrs. Crow. <laughs> Watch it. So Mr. Humphreys is getting us some refreshments from the canteen. Hot cocoa and buns. Hot cocoa. Do you hear that, Miss Nichols? Hot cocoa and buns. It makes the whole thing worthwhile. Yeah. Of course, there'll be a collection for them. Oh, I think the management would allow that out of petty cash. Oh, most generous, sir. It's amazing the way Bone Brothers look after their staff. We do our best. A satisfied team is an efficient team. And a satisfied virgin is a virgin no longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head start. So when? Just a moment. Where's Mr. Mankovitz? Probably putting his evening teeth in. <laughs> he was here a short time ago, taking stock of his shirt. Let's see if you can find him, Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Mankovitz! Mr. Mankovitz! Oh! My God. I've got some bad news for you. He's died at his post. <laughs> I'm not much mistaken, he's gone down with his shirts. Don't be witty, Mr. Humphreys. Soul. He's been on his feet all day. He probably has a sleep on the train round about now. Mr. Magnet! Magnet! Find your spice. Hardly likes to lay a hand on him. Still, quite right, Mr. Fenwick. Sudden shock, heart attack, kicks the bucket. Sunday papers. Aged worker dies at hand of overseer. Would not look good for Bone Brothers. Well, what are we going to do? Give it to me. Mr. Mankovic, are you free? Yes, I'm free. <laughs> good morning, sir. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mankovic. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think we're ready for you now. Good, good, I'm ready, I'm ready. Right, can we all take our places? The first question to be decided is, do we have our cocoa and buns now, or do we wait until we've been going for an hour or two? Well, perhaps we should ask the ladies. Mrs. Crawford, do you feel like having cocoa now? I never feel like cocoa and buns. And if I'd known the management were going to be so stingy, I would have gone out and had a cheeseburger. I, I think there's some cheese in the bun. I don't eat cheese. There's not much cheese in these buns. <laughs> oh, I think I should mention that young Mr. Bone might be coming through during the conference, so perhaps we should eat now and um, get the... Um, get the... Uh, get the banquet out of the way. <laughs> well, I second that. Well, let's not bother about seniority. Let's just dive in. Uh, good idea. Uh, would you like to be mother, Mrs. Crawford? Well, seeing as I'm not going to have any, I don't see why I should be lumbered with pouring it out. Would you do the honours, Mr. Humphreys? Certainly. Is there a softer one? <laughs> These are all so hard. <laughs> yeah, that's soft. Hey, a minute of you completely finished? The ones you haven't squeezed, he's had his chops around. Put me right off. You've not had one, Mr. Fennick. Uh, no, I don't think I want one, thanks. Anybody else for a half-chewed bun? No, thank you. What about the cheese inside? Only been used once. One careful odour. <laughs> well, does anybody not want cocoa? No, but I'll have some just the same, right. thanks. <laughs> that girl guide training certainly comes in useful, Mr. Hartley. <laughs> Shall we get down to the purpose of our coming together? Oh, well, I was wondering when we were going to get around to that. I think it would pay us to examine our whole modus operandi, as it were. These are the, the handling of our customers from the moment when they arrive to the moment when we make the sale. Or not. <laughs> now, I sometimes think of this whole organisation as a ship at sea. Captain Wagstaff here is at the helm, keeping his eyes skinned. <laughs> I'm in the engine room, seeing that we're all going full steam ahead. And you men are the crew. It's called the Titanic. <laughs> and what about the women? Oh, you're the crew too. Now, what happens when the lift doors open and out steps the customer? We man the lifeboats. <laughs> so enough, Mr. Randall. I'll tell you what happens. Captain Wagstaff spots him and steers him over to the counter. Oh, I see. Now all the counters are little ports. And when he docks, we tie him up with our tape measure and don't let him go until we've unloaded him. <laughs> no, that's not quite what I mean. Well, perhaps I can put it more succinctly. But in a way more easily grasped by those unable to understand your simile. <laughs> now, I look upon it as a battle. The customer is the enemy. We deploy our forces. 
Lift door opens. Customer steps out, and what happens? We open up with the machine guns. Ah! There's nothing on like that. I'm going home. No, no, no. Bear with me. Bear with me. Oh, I engage the customer in a verbal skirmish. He is then outflanked by the ever-alert Mr. Magovitz. <laughs> oh, Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Magovitz, are you free? Oh, yes, I'm free. I'm free. Thank you. Now the trouble seems to be that some customers are getting away. Where is the weak link in the chain? <laughs> I think you're onto something there, Wagstaff. Maybe there's a weak link in the chain. <laughs> now, I think we should examine our whole customer handling technique from the beginning. Now, I shall be a customer. I shall arrive at the lift. And I want you to take it right through from the point where Captain Wagstaff spots him to the moment when we make the sale. Uh, good idea, sir. Now, I want you all to observe this very closely. We may possibly learn something from this. All right, now deploy yourselves in your usual position and keep your eyes open. As Mr. Fenwick says, we may all learn something from this. <laughs> well, we're ready, Mr. Fenwick. <laughs> there, he's stuck. Oh, get him out, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> well, we certainly learned something, Miss Nichols. We've learned that Mr. Fenwick doesn't know how to open the lifts. <laughs> Sorry, I, I pressed the floor button and the lift moved, then I pressed the emergency stop and, of course, the doors wouldn't open. But look, there's someone coming down the other lift. That'll be young Mr. Boone. Uh, is my hair tidy? Heavy. <laughs> Gather around, everybody. Young Mr. Boone is coming down. Straighten yourself up, Mr. Reddle. Good evening, everybody. Good, Good evening, evening, Mr. Mr. Bone. I hear you've been having a sales conference. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Bone. Yes, and it's been going very well, sir. Well, I was a salesman once myself, you know. <laughs> I had a stall in the market. I used to sell fish. Oh, dear, smelly stuff. I think you're very wise to have a department store instead, Mr. Bone. <laughs> been having a good tuck in, Mrs. Crawford? Oh, yes. It was delicious. Good. I'm glad we're looking after you. Well, you've all done very well, and it's time you all went home. Oh, thank, thank you, you Mr. Mr. Bone. <laughs> Coat, sir? Hmm? Oh, well, I, I don't mind trying it on. <laughs> You're a cheeky young monkey, aren't you? <laughs> what about those promising young men, sir? Hmm. It's a good fit. Nice material, too. It's uh, Vicuna, sir. I always wear Vicuna. I'll take it. Uh, put it on my account, Wagstaff. <laughs> A very forceful bit of selling. <laughs> Personally trained by me, Mr. Bowen. Oh, yes. We could do with more of their sort. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. <laughs> well, don't be late in the morning. No, no Mr. Mr. Bowen. You've all done very well. Good, Good night, night, Mr. Bowen. Good night. Well, he seems to be in a very good mood. Yes, I've seldom seen him in such a good mood. And that's a smart piece of salesmanship on your part, Mr. Humphreys. You see, that smile does the trick. Yes, it seems to. And you obviously know your stock. <laughs> Even I was unaware that we had a Vicuna coat. <laughs> we don't. You see, Mr. Humphreys sold Mr. Bowen his own coat. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys sold Mr. Bowen Mr. Humphreys' coat. No, Mr. Humphreys sold Mr. Bowen Mr. Bowen's coat. <laughs> Well, I think we've all learned a lot this evening. <laughs> Do uh, you still fancy the unsatisfied virgin? I'm going with your game. Come on, then. <laughs> I must practice that smile myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm hungry tonight. Mm -hmm. How are you being, sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or sloppy. We've also got some sea food that really can your feet. Yeah. Oh, these again, there's plenty around. Yeah. And if you'd like to get a flash, then try a plastic.